have no fear. Valve has the perfect Christmas gift for your grandma this season. Yes, this is actually the um, Valve marketing materials here, which was very surprising uh, use of grandma as like the first person using this for some reason. What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip. So the Steam frame was announced today and it looks like insanely good. And I wanted to share some of my thoughts on the Steam frame after having played like 5,000 hours of VR and like 20,000 plus hours of PC gaming. So this, in my opinion, is a revolutionary gaming device because it combines like the best things about a VR headset, the best things about an XR headset, and throws in the capabilities of a handheld gaming PC like the ROG Ally, and it does so in an all-in-one device that allows you to access your existing Steam library. And if you're anything like me, you already have a huge Steam library of like 250 games, and you just never had time to actually play them all. But have no fear, this device will let you continue ignoring half of your Steam library, but in like a fully portable face-wearing way. And so if you're a PC gamer that has a Steam library, this is gonna be so much more attractive than a Quest 3. But let's go ahead and take a deeper look at the hardware. So we've got four nanometer Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. We'll see what that looks like. It's on ARM 64 architecture. 16 gigs of LPDDR5X memory, which I think should be fine because this is Linux based, which doesn't need as much RAM. So you can either get 256 gig or one terabyte storage, which honestly isn't that much. Like some games are like 200 something gigs now. So you literally may install like one game and it takes up like your whole storage space depending on the game. Now there is a micro SD card slot for expandable storage. It comes with a rechargeable 21.6 watt hour lithium ion battery with a USB-C 2.0 port in the rear for charging and data. That's not very fast if it's 2.0, that's super weird. But you can charge with USB-C up to 45 watts. So that's quite fast for the charging. The head strap is modular and includes dual audio drivers and a rechargeable battery on the rear. I wonder if you can swap that battery for extended battery life. Sure, there will be a lot of mods here, including maybe bigger batteries that you could buy from a third party and put on the headset. For display and optics, we're looking at 2160 by 2160, 72 to 144 hertz refresh rate, custom pancake lenses, the large FOV, 110 degrees. That's really not that large. That's quite small in my opinion. Um, it's very similar probably to what we get in the Quest 3. IPD target range is 60 to 70 millimeters, which is not that big of a range. That might be an issue for some people. There's a lot of people in the 50s or above 70. So I don't know, we'll have to see. Looks like this is also designed to fit eyeglasses underneath the headset up to 140 millimeter width. Inside out camera based tracking, four outward facing monochrome cameras for controller and headset tracking, two interior cameras for eye tracking and foveated streaming. I bet these can also be used for eye tracking inside of games such as VR chat. Monochrome pass through via outward facing camera is possible. So these are not gonna be very good for XR, but if you need to do pass through to like grab a glass of water, it's gonna be there as an option. Uh, IR illuminators for tracking and pass through in dark environments. That's really cool because if you're in a dark room, typically you can't use something like the Quest 3 unless you buy an IR light to shine into the room. Um, but if this has IR illuminators, you'll be able to actually play and game even in a dark environment. That's super cool. Um, and there's a user accessible front expansion port. Wi-Fi 7 2x2 two two bands, dual radios enables concurrent 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi and 6 gigahertz VR streaming. Wireless adapters included in the box with a Wi-Fi 6E or USB link basically, and Bluetooth 5.3 is included for connecting to something like a Steam controller. For speakers, there's dual speaker drivers per ear, integrated into the head strap with a dual microphone array to pick up your voice. It's gonna be 440 grams with everything, the head strap and core module, but the core module by itself is 185 grams if you want to get your own custom head strap installed instead. And there's a look at the controllers as well. So assuming Valve's promises all pan out, this device could replace your Quest 3, your Valve Index, your Steam Deck, maybe even your Xbox, PlayStation 5, and your Switch all in a single portable device that lets you put a big screen projector in front of your eyes, do flat screen gaming, or pull out the VR controllers and do fully immersive PC VR game. We're looking at a resolution of 2160 by 2160 LCD displays with pancake lenses for better visual clarity compared to previous gen VR headsets. This means you'll get just under full HD resolution, 
when looking at flat screen games inside of a 3D VR environment. And I think that's gonna look quite good for most of us and it's gonna be very enjoyable and immersive, I think, for flat screen gaming. Big con here is that this is not micro OLED displays. The LCD displays are not gonna be as contrasty, they won't have as deep and dark blacks and the colors may not be quite as vibrant as micro OLED. For rendering the games, you have a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor, and it should be more capable than what's currently on the Quest 3, but it should be a nice step up in overall performance, while at the same time giving some pretty dang good battery life, probably two to three hours of battery life, which you could extend. And realistically speaking, like this GPU should be powerful enough to play a lot of AAA games at 60 plus FPS at like around a 1080p resolution if I were to do some theory crafting and guess. Now, obviously older titles, probably more than 144 frames per second. And these displays do have variable refresh rate from 72 Hertz up to 144 Hertz. Now Valve and other reviewers are hinting that the price will be around $1,000 or less than the total price for a Valve Index kit. And that is a pretty hefty price when you compare it to the ROG Ally, which costs $500, the Quest 3 that costs $500, the Virtualuma Pro that also costs around $500. But the thing to keep in mind is that the true cost of entry when you're buying a handheld like the Switch 2 is not just the price of the hardware, but also the price of the game. Animal Crossing, $64.99. Little Nightmares, $39.99. $69.99 for Hyrule Warriors. Gosh, Switch games are insane. Mario Party, $80. That's even more expensive than I thought. So if you already have a Steam library that's full of games, or even if you don't, you can buy so many games at great discounts, like games for like $2, $5. Extremely common to get older legacy titles uh, for very low prices. If you already have a Steam library, I think this device could be just like a no brainer. It's like a more powerful Steam Deck that you can slap on your face. This device would be excellent for gaming sessions at home, or while traveling on flights, long road trips, etc. Um, but I gotta say that something like the XR glasses from Veecher, they're gonna cost less and they're gonna provide a lot more flexibility in the sense that you have better surrounding spatial awareness when you wear them. Like if you're wearing a full-fledged VR headset in public, you're not gonna know what's going on around you. You could get robbed, you could get beat up. I don't know, you have to be in a very safe space, like in a private car or maybe in an airplane where you know nothing's gonna be changing around you. Valve made a really interesting choice when they decided to completely drop Windows. Like Asus with the ROG Ally, you still have Windows 11 on here. You can still play all the games natively inside of the x86 architecture, and you have 100% of your Steam library supported, as well as many different types of launchers such as Epic Games. Steam Frame completely drops Windows 11 entirely, and instead they opt for a Linux-based Steam OS. This allows for better game optimization, like literally more frames per second. What are you doing? Where are you going? Where do you think you're going to jump? There's nothing over there, buddy. Okay, stay right here. Can you stay right here? This means that you can finally say goodbye to poor Windows optimization, clunky UI, unwanted privacy invasion, and crappy battery life that Windows brings. And probably also crappy Windows updates now that are being driven by AI. And the con here of dropping Windows is that you don't have Windows native app support. So like you wanna do productivity apps like Microsoft Office and other key applications, you may not be able to do that, at least not very easily. Hey, that hurts, hey. Hey, please stop. Ow! <laughs> yeah, I love you too. That sandpaper tongue is brutal. Now, one of my favorite features for SteamOS is the ability to pause the game that you're playing, put your device down, and come back the next day or come back after a while and turn it on and very little battery life will have drained from the device. This is different from Windows. Typically, Windows will either go into a hibernate mode to protect the battery or the battery will have significantly drained by the time you pick it back up again. This is just gonna allow gamers to quickly jump in and out of the games that they're playing. Now the translation layer that Valve is using is FEX, which is an open source x86 to ARM64 Linux based translation layer. And the cool thing here is it's open source. So this is gonna allow other companies to continue developing this. I really appreciate that Valve is working with an open source project rather than trying to monopolize some translation layer like what most 
other companies are doing. But even if you did found all your productivity apps you needed through Linux, I don't think very many of us would want to wear a VR headset for say like eight hours plus during the day. I mean, the, the resolution on the headset's not high enough. The comfort level I'm guessing is also not ideal for that long of a session. You know, two hours, probably no problem. But like four hours plus, it, you know, VR headsets tend to just get less comfortable when you wear them that long. Steam Frame comes with a dual band wireless USB dongle. This should allow for low latency, high quality VR streaming and flat stream gaming paired when plugged into a high powered gaming PC. So, you know, you have a gaming laptop, you plug that dongle in and then bam, you get low latency, high quality wireless PC VR stream directly from your PC and you don't have to rely on the onboard Snapdragon anymore to get high quality VR. Because let's face it, the Snapdragon processor in this is going to be good, but it's not going to be anywhere near as powerful as a true dedicated NVIDIA graphics card, especially since the Snapdragon processor is an ARM based architecture processor, which means that if you want to play x86 games, which most PC games are x86 and do not have ARM support yet, uh, you're going to need a translation layer. And this means in order to play your entire x86 gaming library from Steam, you're going to need to use a translation layer from x86 to ARM. And, and spoiler alert, I've tested ARM gaming and many games just literally don't want to run. They crash more often. They have worse 1% low stutters. And using a translation layer also reduces battery life. I do think the translation layer could be an Achilles heel of the Steam frame because yeah, you might be able to theoretically play almost your entire Steam library, but I bet you most of the x86 applications will have bugs or crashes or poor performance when compared to how it would run if it was a native ARM application. Now Steam is going to offer a Steam frame verified game list for standalone games. Uh, so you can be a bit more confident that it's going to run well before you buy it. Uh, and you'll be able to easily identify which games will likely be able to run so you know which ones to install on your Steam frame. Now the good thing here is if Steam frame is a very successful platform, this is going to motivate a lot of developers to start natively supporting the ARM architecture within their apps. If we can get more games to support ARM architecture, we'll get more CPUs and GPUs in the PC market that are based on ARM and ARM is just more power efficient, allowing us to potentially one day have PC gaming laptops and other gaming hardware that could play games for many hours with great performance on the go, at least in theory. I'm envisioning a future and I do think ARM may be the future of PC gaming. We'll have to see. Okay, so to wrap all of this up, let's briefly compare what your options are going to be like here in a few months. You could get a gaming laptop like the Zephyrus G14 right here. This costs $1599. You could get it on sale for probably maybe $1200. Um, and this will let you play basically all the games on Ultra at like around QHD plus resolution with high FPS. But gaming on battery does not work that well with an NVIDIA GPU and you can't play VR unless you spend additional money to get a VR headset. But from a productivity perspective, I don't think the Steam frame has the potential to actually replace a laptop or a desktop PC, at least not yet. Another option you could consider is getting something like the ROG Ally. This has full Windows native support, so you could plug this into a USB-C dock and you basically have a full desktop or laptop-like experience. And then when you want to game on the go, you unplug it, take it with you, and you can get like an hour and a half to two hours of gaming on this. This also pairs very well with XR glasses if you want a big screen experience on the go. And I think that's a great example of something that is great on the go, and at home, but the downside to something like this is that the performance is just nowhere near what a full-fledged gaming laptop can provide. Now you could also go for something like the Switch or Switch 2, but it's also very limiting and doesn't let you play most of the PC titles or PlayStation titles where PC gaming obviously has the biggest library of games out of any ecosystem out there. Switch 2 obviously doesn't have VR and it doesn't have a big screen on the go, but you could use something like these XR glasses to get a big screen experience on the go with the Switch 2. If you... And last but not least, you could just buy XR glasses like the Luma Pros and pair them with your smartphone for mobile gaming as well as cloud-based AAA game streaming using an Xbox controller. This would allow you to also access your Steam library on the go through that cloud streaming. These have a lot of flexibility and if you're interested in these XR glasses, I did a detailed review, which I can link in the video description down below. Ultimately, the appeal of the Steam frame for me is that it's an all-in-one device 
almost, except for maybe productivity, and it provides access to your existing Steam library if you have one. And if you don't have one, it's still much cheaper to buy games on Steam than it is in virtually all the other ecosystems out there. If I had to sum up the appeal of the Steam frame in one word, I would say simplicity. And assuming that Valve actually delivers on all of its promises here, I think the Steam frame is going to be a huge success. You know, I wasn't even going to have you really in this review, but he just would not leave me alone. He kept begging to get into my arms. Say goodbye to the camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, you're going to be in my arms while I edit too? Okay, let's do this.